on this show, and I really don't have openings until March of 2021, is because every time I have a guest on, almost every time, you guys love them so much you want them to come back, and today's guest is no exception. However, today she has some very exciting news because she has a book coming out. You can pre-order it on Amazon. It's already number one in new releases for Whole Foods. And her name is Jill Dalton, and she is from the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Channel. And today she is going to make sweet potato muffins, vegan ones, of course. And she uses only whole foods like dates and things that are actual food. Please welcome back, Jill. So good to see you again. Hi, Chef AJ. It's so great to be here again. Love it. I, know they, I know you were nervous the first time because you you do all, you know, you spend a lot of time making beautiful recipe videos that are edited and you take your time and I know you were a little bit nervous the first time but you did great and everybody loved you and they wanted you back if you haven't seen that episode she made a wonderful tuna salad on a lentil flatbread your quinoa flatbread is one of my favorite recipes it's like so easy it's ridiculous how easy it is two ingredients that's I mean it's amazing yeah and one of the ingredients is water right exactly so it's not even I mean I guess that's not even an ingredient really but (gasps) Yeah. So yeah, your recipes are so great. And I'm so happy about your book. Congratulations. And what I love is it's not only got the, the, the photo, it's, you know, you got a video with every, I mean, not in the book, obviously, but that's really cool. So if somebody is a beginning, a beginning their journey in plant-based, or maybe doesn't really know how to cook, they've not only have what it's supposed to look like in the book, but everyone is seen, is linked to a video. So like, if they can't figure it out, it's, it's a no brainer. Exactly. And we're working on possibly having a QR code in the book for each, uh, for each recipe so that they can just, you know, take a picture of the QR code and then go right on their computer if they want to watch the video. We're working on it. We haven't made that agreement quite yet, but we're, we've got our fingers crossed that they're going to let us put that in there. That would be very cool if that happened. Like, it's almost like the book becomes the video. Exactly. And great, our whole story is in the beginning. My husband, Jeffrey, wrote this whole big, uh, the intro to the book, and it's, a fantastic story you'll get to know a little bit more about us and our in our history so that's exciting to know it's it's so close november it's coming out but you can pre-order it right now so and i'll keep posting the link it's in the show notes but i'll keep posting the link let's see uh stephanie says i don't usually buy cookbooks because i eat quite simply but i ordered yours from amazon and your style of cooking sings to me well i think you sing as well too don't you jill yeah i do i do that's perfect. All right. So keep, so check it out on Amazon and why not pre-order it? And let's see what you got for us today. All right. So the sweet potato muffins. This is, it's so funny because we have a membership community on our website uh, that you can be a part of and which, you know, our whole show is run now by our membership um, community. So if you go on the members or if you become a member, every month I have a vote. I have a recipe wall where I have my ideas of things that I want to make and then things that are ready to be filmed. And I take a picture every month and I ask people what they want me to create next from that list. So they get to vote on what I make next. And it's, it's really fun. But I just, as a fluke, I was looking through Pinterest and just saw all these photos and I saw a photo for sweet potato muffins. And I thought, oh, that sounds that sounds interesting. I'll just put it on the board. But I thought, eh, not many people are going to be that interested in it. And I wasn't even super excited about it. But I got so many votes for that and it won for that month. So here we are. And it's had a really great response. So let's go. So we're going to start. I have got my recipe here. I've got two cups of rolled oats in my bowl here that we're going to grind into flour. Just, you can use whatever blender you have. I just, I have one of these big monster blenders, but it doesn't take a monster blender to blend oats. So, we're this for a minute. You guys love that Zoom feature? Yeah, this blender's so cool. We live in an apartment when we first moved back to the States and, you know, Vitamixes are really loud. I really wanted a Vitamix, but living in an apartment and having four of us in a home and we use our blender very heavily, I thought our neighbors are going to hate us. So we found this Blendtec that has a little silent case on it. Fantastic, fantastic. 
Okay, so there's my oat, my oat flour. I don't like to grind it really, really fine. I still like to give, have some, some of the fiber left in it. It gives you a little bit more of a meaty um, muffin, but if you wanna grind it finer, that's, that's good too. I just feel like it's probably a little bit healthier to grind it less. Okay, so now we're gonna put in one teaspoon of baking soda. and one teaspoon of baking powder. And I always try, you gotta look at the grocery store. I always try to get, you can see this. I don't know if you can see that close. Uh, I always get the aluminum free because you shouldn't be eating that kind of stuff in your baked goods. But a lot of baking sodas and baking powders, they're, it's, it's part of their processing. For some reason, it ends up having aluminum in it. So I always try to look for those at the grocery store. And then one teaspoon of cinnamon. And if you like stuff really cinnamony, you can put more in there if you want. One teaspoon just seems to be a nice medium. And then I'm gonna whisk it. I'm just stirring it with my whisk just to make sure that there aren't any clumps of baking soda or baking powder. add my flax meal. So how much flax meal? I don't know what my recipe say here. Where is it? One tablespoon. And I don't, I don't even soak my flax meal anymore. You know how they, for baking, uh, you use flax meal instead of eggs. And you usually make a flax egg. But I find that in some baked goods, you don't even have to soak it first because the moisture is going into, into the dry mixture and that flaxseed will bulk up just the same. So it kind of saves you a step. Okay, so now we're on to blending the wet ingredients. And you should already have your uh, oven preheated to 350. And I have right, right here, I have a cup of mashed sweet potato. It's already cooked. And I like using the orange ones because it makes a prettier color muffin, but you could use uh, the white colored sweet potato or like an Okinawa or even the purple sweet potato, that would make a really, really pretty, pretty muffin. And it doesn't really change the flavor. Although I find that the orange ones seem to be, I think they're a little sweeter. So for a muffin, the sweeter is probably better. And then I have a cup of, we like to use soy milk. Um, but you can use whatever plant milk you have, almond milk, coconut milk, oat milk, whatever you have. They all work the same. We have one teaspoon of vanilla. One tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Jill, there's a question from Peter. Are the cookbook recipes different from the ones on your YouTube channel? Nope. Every, every recipe that's in the cookbook is also on YouTube. That was on purpose so that they could have, so that you could have the video along with it. Um, so, you know, all of our videos that are out there already, they'll be in the cookbook. So, you know, we realize that is, that is something, you know, you, you can essentially get our recipes for free online, but you know, a lot of people really like having that paper cookbook. It's kind of a, it's kind of a romantic thing, right? You know, to sit on, sit on the couch or in your chair with your cup of hot cocoa or coffee or something and thumb through these beautiful pictures of food and, you know, make up your, your dream list of what you're going to make that week or, or for holidays. So cookbooks, I love them. And you can see it. Yeah, you can and, see. and I think the fact that you give so much for free, people will support it because the same thing happened to Kathy Fisher. She, you know, her book was very successful, straight up food. And it, it was the ones on the blog. But like you say, people do like a lot. Well, at least me. I mean, I know some of these younger kids just don't, but I love holding it in my hand. I love cookbooks. I think they're just, they're so dreamy. And, I mean, I'm a book, a book fiend anyway. So I like to have the actual cookbook. Um, so to this, the wet mixture, I'm adding a cup of dates. And these are deglet dates. Um, I really prefer medjool dates because I feel like they're they're creamier, they're sweeter. Um, but right now they just they you know with all of the grocery stuff going on, 
they happen to be really, really expensive. And deglet dates are way cheaper. And they seem to do the job just as well, especially for baked goods. But if you're eating them just plain, go for the medjool dates because you'll be much more satisfied. Let's see if I got all my wet stuff in here. Let's see. Dates, vanilla, apple cider, soy milk, and mashed sweet potato. Okay. So now we're going to blend this all. And we're just going to blend it till you really don't see many date chunks left. And I realize, you know, you might not be able to get all of the date chunks out of there. Perfectly fine. We just want a nice, creamy, smooth consistency. that nice and creamy so now we're just going to pour that into the bowl along with your dry goods i hope all of you out there are doing okay with this crazy weather and i know it's you know whatever's going on in california it's just crazy times right now but i hope you're all out there being safe and eating well. It's definitely one thing you can do, as we've all found. You know, people have all these jokes about putting on the, you know, 20 pounds during this time or 15. <laughs> it's hard when you're home and that food is just accessible and you want comfort food. A lot, a lot, of, yeah, a lot of fans. Tracy says, love Jill. Drudy family loves Jill. Yep, making it with the purple. Seen that show? Check out Brittany Giroud. It's the Giroudi family. She has a channel also, and she has some really great recipes. And she's just the sweetest girl. She's so sweet. I agree. Yeah, she was on. She made a charcuterie. Was yeah, I watched the, the big tray. That was so pretty. Yep. Okay. Just gonna, mixing it up. Okay. If you can see that. So it's not, it's really thick. And it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit lumpy. You can still see the grains of the, the oats in there. It's not going to be a typical like cake batter type of muffin. This is a healthy muffin. But it's going to taste a little naughty. They're really good. Okay. But this muffin, you can eat it for breakfast or a snack for after dinner, you know, treat, just to kind of hide over that sweet tooth. This is great because it's loaded with fiber. There's no refined sugars, no oil. It's just fantastic. People are really loving your t-shirt, Jill. Do you sell those? We do. If you go on our website, uh, across the top bar, this shop our store, and it's in the store or shop, shop or store. Good shop. I'll look for it and I'll get a link. Yeah, it's in there. So yeah, you can, I think we have, we have this and it comes in two or three different colors. And then I think, do we still have the three quarter? Okay, so we just have, we used to have three quarter t-shirts, but that was a different company. It says shop. So across the top bar of our website, uh, it says shop, that's where they are. All right, so this recipe makes eight muffins. And because it's a whole food plant-based mixture, it's not gonna rise and get real super fluffy like typical muffins do. So you can fill these little things. I just lined my, my uh, cupcake tin with papers. You can also oil it just a little bit if you want, but I don't use oil, so I don't have it in the kitchen. So the papers are great. Um, but the muffins, you can really fill them super full because they're not gonna ooze over and stick to your pan. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to start filling them up. Do you ever use those silicone muffin cups? I use those. I find they're great. You just pop them out. 
I haven't because they're they're individual, right? So do you just put them on a cookie sheet or something? Oh no, they come in twelve. They come in twelve. They're they're fantastic. If I wasn't, I might be able to grab it. And ask my husband to show you because it's really a game changer. Because oh, they I just go. That. Yeah, yeah. I love my. I have silicone bread pans. Gosh, what a lifesaver! You don't have to. You know, you barely have to wash them. Nothing ever sticks to it. I love them. Yeah, I'm kind of, well, I guess I don't, I don't make, I haven't made a whole lot of muffins until this recipe. So I didn't really, you know, think I needed another, uh, another new thing when I already had a, a cupcake tin. But that may, may get me to get one. Because <laughs> these still, you know, they still have to be cleaned. And, and after a while, if you can see mine, looks a little worse for the wear. It starts rusting a little bit. It's kind of strange. So you can see, you can see how full I'm putting these. You can see, you know, they're pretty much, they're over the top of the papers for sure. And that's just fine. So funny, yeah, you see, uh, I'm not used to going live. So, you know, on these parts where I'm not saying anything or just I keep making the thing, you know, that's usually the parts that we edit out. Yeah, no, that's okay. I mean, I try not to be one of those chatty hosts because I like to make this show about the guests. But in this case, I will show you this. It was a gift from Linda Weed. Isn't it cool? So it's solid. Yeah, it's solid. And you just, uh, so so I made some, I have a recipe that I love called cram muffins. They're like carrot cake and they're oil free and, you know, no sugar. And you just go like this if you want to oh. get them out. It, nothing sticks. Isn't that cool? I think I'm probably going to have to get one now. Yep. <laughs> okay. So these are ready. Get all that goodness out of there. Let's Okay, so now I'm just going to pop these into the oven for 25 minutes on 350 degrees. I'll be right back. Okay. I can look for the, the, the muffin thing if you guys want. I can post a link to it. I'm not sure if it's in my Amazon store or not. We've got a lot of YouTube royalty watching today. Brittany Gerudi, Jessica Kroc, who we are trying to find a date to get on the show. And uh, let's see. And all of you guys are rock stars too for watching we have another show today at 2 p.m we have a show on sexual health you don't want to miss that okay cool so i'm already done no <laughs> already out of the oven. time warp so i made a batch before because so, i didn't i knew we wouldn't have probably have time to wait 25 minutes for these to bake so here are the here are the finished muffins and you can see you know they look like a hearty muffin right they're not that really smooth pretty top but if you wanted, you know, you could make some, uh, some type of frosting. Like I have a frosting in my, uh, oh gosh, all of my cake recipes have, there's a vanilla frosting, um, like my carrot cake, the turtle cake. Um, I have a lemon cake. Let's see, I'm gonna see. Like hummingbird the, cake. The hummingbird cake. That, I was like, what's that other cake? And I've got a couple new, new ones in the works that I'm so excited to put out there. I've been working for a long time and we've eaten way too many of these cakes. A red velvet cake. I was trying to make a red velvet cake without using red food coloring, but it's, it's really tough. And I ended up getting some plant-based food coloring just to add a little bit. Um, and then I'm making an Oreo cake minus the Oreo. It's gorgeous and I can't wait to, to film it and get it out to you guys. So that's what's coming. That's incredible. Well, it just shows how easy your recipes are because you're done in like less than 20 minutes. No, oh, isn't that? I mean, there's, and there's very simple ingredients and ingredients you probably already have in your cupboard. Most people have oats. Most people have, you know, baking soda, baking powder, apple cider vinegar, flax meal, you know, very simple ingredients and sweet potatoes. And they're, yeah, yeah, and they freeze really well. You could put these in a, in a Tupperware container, put them in your freezer, you know, make a big batch or keep them in your fridge. 
I would suggest keeping them in the fridge anyway because they are a whole food. So baked goods especially will go bad really quickly if you leave them out because there's no preservatives. So I'll peel one off here and show you. And the papers aren't so good. At, we still end up peeling off some of that muffin, but. Yeah, that's why you want to get the silicone pan. I'm going to post a link to one of them, but there's so many kinds. Uh, so infinite love and gratitude is suggesting beet powder for your red velvet cake. Yeah, yeah I try. I actually tried beet juice and it worked pretty well. Um, I got I got a bit of a red color, but I think as it bakes, it just changes the color of the, those natural ingredients. And the cocoa powder kind of just overpower, you know, brown will overpower the red. So you get a brown, but it's got just the teeniest hint of red to it. What's the most popular recipe on your website? The most popular recipe? I'm having my husband look it up. I'm not even sure anymore. I would say, well, I'm not even gonna guess because I think my guess is probably wrong. <laughs> I mean, is there a way to is there a way to track that to see what how... he's looking it up right now? So here's a question from Stephanie on the podcast with Brian Kroc. You mentioned you have recently gone into sprouting from home. Do you have any favorite sprouts, and do you just put them on salads or eat them in other dishes? Mm, that is a fantastic question. Let me grab my and see where's the sprout. Oh, so my most popular recipe is oat milk. It's so simple. Once you guys try making oat milk, which you probably already have, a lot of people have, and realize how much, you know, oatly in the grocery store is really expensive. And some of the other oat milks are really expensive because it's trendy. But oat milk costs almost nothing to make at home. It's ridiculous. And it's super easy, super quick. For oat milk, it's like two salad dressings, flatbreads, and maybe like Okay. Like, do you know what it means when you buy oat milk and it says hydrolyzed oats? Is that bad? I don't know what that means. Cause but like the Trader Joe's, I, I prefer to make my own too, but I always have like one box on the shelf, you know, just in case. And it says hydrolyzed oats and water. What does that mean? Hydrolyzed? I would guess that they're probably heated in some special way. Cause I know Oatly has a patented process. Like there's some kind of Someone has, had told me that it's like some kind of a fermentation process, but a lot of what I like about making mine at home also is that if you look on the boxes of almost any plant-based plant milks, they all have oil, they all have additives, and who knows what that stuff is, and you definitely don't want to be drinking oil in your, your milk every day. I mean, all that extra fat is just not necessary, but it does make the, the milk creamier, it makes it emulsify better, that's why you can use it in your coffee. Um, that's why, you know, when you make your homemade oat milk, it does separate. It just does. But if you really understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, it's like that separation thing, it's not going to bother you because you know that you're, you're eating it for a good purpose. And, and, you know, even when you can find ones without oil and, and sugar, they almost always have salt. But you bring up a good point, Jill, about emulsifiers. And I didn't know this until I interviewed a gastroenterologist named Dr. Janice Laster, who was on the show last week. And she is an expert on the GI Health Summit. And she says those emulsifiers are really bad for gut health. Really bad. I didn't, I have never heard that either. Yeah, me neither. So, so I stopped and I, now I, I mean, I've always known how to make my own, but I got lazy. And so I completely stopped uh, buying them. So yeah. I use um, uh, lecithin. I think it works as an emulsifier, but I don't really, I don't think I really know completely what that is either. I know it's a part of the soybean, but I, you know, it just doesn't bother me. So I don't, and we, we do buy um, soy milk, which is just soy, soybeans and water. Um, because there's four of us, I can't really keep up with the demand of milk in our family. So, you know, we end up buying soy milk. Mm -hmm. So I, I need to go back to your question about the sprout. So this is Doug Evans' new book, this, the, the sprout book, which is fantastic. You should all get it. And I really, yeah, I went through this phase probably a year ago where I was really into sprouts and I was sprouting broccoli sprouts because that was, that's the one you know, I think it's just because it went, it got really trendy. There's a lot of other sprouts that are just as healthy. Um, and then it just, I just kind of forgot about it. It kind of, it got out, you know, out of my routine. 
And then I got this book and read the importance of, of why you should do this and how easy it is. We just have uh, our counter set back up there. I don't know if you can see that there. Is it in the shot? No, it's not in the shot. We have a little section of our counter that just has a, we have a plastic tray on the counter. And then I got these little jar stands and mason jars with the sprouting lids. And I'll, I'll grab a couple of the, my favorite sprouts. How many guys watching make your own plant milk? Take a poll. It's really easy. Just take whatever plus water. Hemp seeds, water. Oats, water. Rice, water. Almonds, water. Almond butter, water. Yeah, making your own milk is so, it's so worth it. And it's so satisfying. And it's, if you, you know, if you make your own almond milk or, or cashew milk, you know, anything that is made with a nut, you get so much more of that fiber and, and the actual pulp of the almond. If you buy it from the store, there's very little almond actually in that milk. It's, it's got so much water compared to the ratio of almonds. Yeah. Pulsifiers. Do you, do you like, do you have a special bag for straining? The guest on yesterday's show actually was what the inventor of one of the very first nut milk bags. No, I don't. I just, I have a nut milk, nut milk, nut milk bag that I got on Amazon, but mine I think is too fine because it takes me a while to, to really squeeze and oat milk because it has all of the starch in it. It clogs up the little, you know, the holes in the bag. So I think I need to get a different one. Like now I just, I just use the little, um, like a wire strainer, just a fine mesh wire strainer and pour it in there. And I don't worry about that fiber. You know what you could do? You can even buy a paint straining bag for like 99 cents, one that hasn't been used for paint. And that could be your nut milk bag too. Hey, I saw that you had that tip. Uh, I watched one of your shows. Like, it's oh. also great. Like if you ever use frozen spinach, it's great for s squeezing it out. Yeah, that's such a great tip. I don't expect people do that. When so there, there's a question on whether, if you have a garden. Yes. I have um, five raised beds and I've got fruit trees and berry bushes and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm, yeah, that's probably where I spend most of my time is out in my yard. So I still have stuff in the garden. It's doing okay. I mean, North Carolina is a little tricky. It's really humid. So any disease or bug that you start getting, it just takes over just like that. It's, there's constantly something I'm battling with. So sprouting is another option because you can do it inside. You don't have to have sunlight. You don't have to have very much space. It doesn't cost very much. You know, your initial investment to get a few jars and some lids. It's very, very affordable. Um, so my favorites right now, I got them from Sprout People. So you can just look online, sproutpeople.com. They sell seeds, but there's tons and tons of companies that sell sprouting seeds. And you have to use sprouting seeds. You can't just use, you know, the stuff that you get from the garden, you know, for your garden. These are specially selected because of their germination rate. They've proven, you know, like not, at least 90 percentage percent of uh, germination rate. So these are cabbage, cabbage sprouts, red and green. Those are my favorite, which look like this. This is what the green ones look like. And this took three days and it was full, but we eat so many of them. We usually don't even have this much laying around. So yeah, you just soak them for eight hours or overnight in water, pour off the water. You know, I have these little stands that let it sit like this and you just rinse it at the end of the day. You know, rinse it once or twice a day, three days later, you have tons of food. And if you want to talk about energy, these are also, these are some just lentil sprouts. They are super delicious. Is it really that easy? I, I learned this in culinary school, but it was like 20 years ago and I haven't done it. So easy. I think the one caveat I will say, because the whole fad right now is with broccoli sprouts. When you're rinsing them and when they're sitting on your counter during the first couple days, they smell horrific. <laughs> it's all that sulforaphane. They're all sulfur based. The smell is terrible. So that would... You know, if I was just starting out sprouting and that was the first one I did, I'd probably be pretty discouraged thinking that they might be bad or they might have gone rotten, but they, they aren't. You just keep at it. 
So I, I would probably try like lentil sprouts or sprouting buckwheat or quinoa or some of these like cabbage, um, red or green cabbage, because you're not going to get that horrible, horrible smell. And, you know, if you're, it's winter or you're locked in your house and you don't have the windows open, it's like that air just floats around in your house and your house smells like you've cooked cabbage all day. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's so easy. So simple. Do you have any videos or will you make any videos showing how to do it? We're going to do a course, just like we have our course right now for our 28 days plant-based made easy um, course for transitioning. Uh, we're also going to do a sprout course. So that will be soon-ish. And, <laughs> and recipes, yeah. Oh, and, that, and that's what else, what else he asked for recipes. Yeah, we have a few recipes that we've worked up using the sprouts, but mostly we just, any meal that we have, we try to, you know, just like put on about a cup's worth of sprouts on the top of whatever we're eating. Even what if it's, pan even if it's pancakes? I just mix them in. I That's them amazing. In or, or yeah, or even I just have them on the side if I eat pancakes, just like, like a little side salad. So Monika says questions, sprout versus microgreens. Sprouts, sprouts for sure. I tried... I did microgreens for a while, um, a few months ago. I had my whole back of my pantry set up, my lights, everything. I feel like it's, it's there's too many, it takes too long and, and, and like your, your risk of having molds and mildews get into it is so high. It's really difficult to get it through a whole process for like seven to 14 days, some of them take, without getting a mold in there. And, and it's expensive because you can't just, I mean, you can do it sometimes just on a non-bleached uh, paper towels, but you really have to have, it's better if you have some type of growing medium. So you have to have a supply of growing medium, which is like uh, coconut core or, or some actual sprouting medium dirt. And it's not cheap. Definitely not cheap. And I feel like you know, that's seven to 14 days for microgreens three days, three <laughs> and water. That's it. <laughs> Jill wants to know what are the benefits of sprouts? Oh my gosh. What are the energy is, I would say my first thing I, we, I should say we, cause we all eat them. I'm a coffee drinker, but coffee can't touch sprouts. When we eat sprouts, I have so much crazy energy. It's unreal. I, I never have an afternoon crash anymore. And if I feel like I might be, you know, like my blood sugar or something is going down, handful of sprouts. Done. That's amazing. <laughs> do you do you eat mostly your own recipes? Yeah, mostly. Yeah, and I mean, I I think, you know, we're uh, we're a little more informal about our rest our, our daily eating than than most of my recipes. Um, but now I have, I have two grown children, 19 and 21. And, you know, since COVID started, I knew that a lot of the pressure was going to be on me to, you know, to provide the meals every day. And I said, you know, what if we split this up? What if you girls both take two nights a week and make dinner and I'll take the, the remaining three. And it's been fantastic. And, but they, you know, they pretty much stick to our recipes. Um, but they're really good at creating recipes too. Yeah. Krista has a question that was going to be my next question. What is your favorite recipe of yours? Oh, gosh, let's see. Oh, there's so many. Peanut sauce, for sure. The peanut tofu sauce and the hummingbird cake. Oh, so good. But now I think the Oreo cake is probably going to top the hummingbird cake. I think it's going to be my, more of my favorite. Oh my God. Gina says she's so beautiful and has such a calming demeanor. She's delightful. And I agree. You know, I was a little stressed before the show because of something happening, but you're, you're very calm and you're, you're just, you're soothing your voice. You're not, you've, you've made me very relaxed. You ever thought about doing meditation CDs or something? Cause you have a very soothing way. Oh, so sweet. I definitely don't feel like that right now. I feel very nervous. It doesn't show at all. It doesn't show at all. Uh, let's see. So Susan says if she has a Breville smart oven, would she adjust the baking time at all for the recipe? I, I don't see why it isn't an oven an oven. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, unless it's like a convection oven, 
I think convection ovens maybe cook it a little bit faster. And I think some of the brevels are convection, aren't they? So yeah, maybe just check it at 20 minutes. <laughs> Sandy says 50 years ago, Ann Wigmore um, shared information on sprouts and wheatgrass. This is nothing new, AJ. Well, thank you so much. I guess it's new to me because I'm not in, in the sprouting community yet, but I'm certainly going to look into it. Doesn't mean I don't eat them, but I, you know, I, and again, I'm taking the gut course with Dr. Will B and he talks about broccoli sprouts and why the sulfurafrain is so good. Uh, when you buy them already made, I guess that they don't have that smell. Yeah. And I, what I find with the sprouts from the grocery store, you never quite know how long they've been there. And sometimes I'll get them and bring them home and I open them up and they're a little bit slimy and they're definitely not pleasant to eat and they're expensive. You know, sometimes just a teeny little um, plastic thing is $5. And I mean, really this whole, I think this whole package and I've used probably a third of this already. I think this was $10 and this will make, I mean, it, this is this amount right here. This full jar is about four tablespoons. Four tablespoons. So you can imagine how many servings are in here, and how much they will make compared to what you're paying at the store. And if you have little ones, I mean, what what a cool science experiment! And to get them involved, and it's so exciting to watch them grow. And you know, and even in the winter, you you'll have. I mean, this is produce, right? fresh produce all year long. You don't have to go to the grocery store. I mean, how much better could that get? Yeah. Randy says, my mung beans always grow leaves. How do you prevent that? They always grow leaves. That's a really good question. I think maybe you're, maybe it's just too long. You're just letting them grow for too long, which the, the leaves are perfectly fine. They're actually full of chlorophyll. So, you know, if you put them in the, um, the window for just a few hours to let them soak up some chlorophyll or produce chlorophyll, um, all the better. I, but I know, you know, if you're using, using them for like Thai food and you're used to not seeing the leaves on them, but uh, I don't, I, I, the mung beans that I have, they're not the typical mung beans, I guess, because they don't get that big and not ours. They do get a little teeny leaf on them, but I don't find the leaves are an issue. So John wants to know the name of where you get your seeds and Sherry wants to know if you could show the thing that keeps them at the angle. Yeah. You guys ask and we deliver. Yeah, so these you can find on Amazon and it just folds up, you know, it comes like this and you just stretch it out and it sits on the counter. Let me show you the jar. Let's see where I'm at on the counter here. Can you see that? It sits like that. Can you see that? Let's scooch back a little bit here. Yeah, so it, and you can, you know, you can adjust it. If you have bigger jars, it'll sit back further. So then it, you know, you have to be able to get that moisture out. It has to drip out. You can't just set it on the counter like that. Because all of those seeds that are in the bottom, they're going to get they're going to get soggy and rancid, so they have to be able to drip. Um, so I have two companies that I like to use. This is Sprout House. They have a pretty pretty big selection. And then um, Sprout People. I think I like Sprout People's seeds better. So those, but there are other country companies companies out there. And if you look, if you get this book, which is a really good idea, because he talks about all of the different types of sprouts that you can grow and why and what's what vitamins and nutrients are in them, how, you know, because some of them are different. Like if you do uh, pea shoots, um, you have to do them on a tray. Some of them you can't do in a jar like this. Uh, most of them you can but he explains all of that in this book. And then he has a lot of references in the back of the book for where you can get your sprout seeds from. That's where I found sprout people. So be sure to get this book. He's such a great teacher too. And check out his, I think he, he was on uh, Rich Rolls podcast. It's a great, great talk. 
Cool. A couple of people are asking, do you keep the seeds in the refrigerator? I don't. I don't. But we have an air-conditioned house. So maybe if you don't have an air-conditioned house, maybe you should keep them in the refrigerator. Great. And a couple of people asked if they wanted to make your muffins that you demonstrated today, but only fill them halfway, would it would they adjust the baking time? Why, why not just eat half a muffin and just do the whole thing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that's a good question. I mean, maybe I would just at 15 minutes, I would just check them because they might be already done. I would assume that they probably would be done quicker if it's the less amount. Nice. So what else have you got planned for your big book launch in November? Gosh, what's the plan? I don't know. I think we're finally going to celebrate all the work's done. <laughs> That's great. I'll post the link so you guys can check it out. You can pre-order it. Yeah, I think, you know, people don't really realize how uh, publishing books and, and the whole process and how much work is involved. It's, it's a lot of work. Uh, it takes a long time. It's taken, I mean, this whole process was probably over a year. So yeah, it's no small feat just to put out a simple cookbook. I, I, I'm, my third one's coming out next week. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Someone, Jean is saying, could you show the top of the sprout jar? What does it look like? Sure. Yeah, I'll just take the, I'll take the lid off. So you can just use your standard rings for, for a mason jar. These are the wide mouth mason jar. And then I ordered these stainless steel screens. You see that? It's just a fine mesh stainless steel. I have some plastic ones that work pretty good too, but I feel like, you know, stainless steel is always a better bet because, you know, it's going to be the sprouts are going to be sitting on that. There's going to be water soaking on that. You know, if you have your stuff sitting on plastic, it's probably not as healthy. So stainless steel, I highly suggest them. They are, they are really great. And they will work. Let's see if there's any more questions. Uh, you, uh, Deborah says your daughter might be on American Idol. Yeah, we're... I, I, I don't really know the rules around this yet, but um, she had to sign a contract that she wasn't going to say anything more at this point. So we can't really make any announcements for a while until things are more solidified, but we know that she's going to make it. We have confidence in her. She's amazing. So oh, cool. I'm sure you'll tell everybody when it happens, right? Oh, yes. We'll make a big announcement and we'll probably have a little video footage that they can see or they can watch it on the show. You know, yeah, we'll definitely put it out there when we are allowed to. That is pretty exciting. So Stephanie says, could we substitute cranberries for sweet potato in this recipe? I don't think so. But do you have a cranberry bread recipe she'd like to know? I do. I do. I have a cranberry bread, bread recipe. Yep. So look on our website. We'll be there. Very good. Yeah. yeah, but you can't really substitute cranberries for the sweet potato because you need that moisture, right? Yeah, and it's, you know, the sweet potato is the juice, it's the starch, it's moisture. Yeah, cranberries, it would be really bitter, I think. And that's a lot of cranberries. Yeah. Uh, Carlisa says, where do you get the straining tops? Uh, just one, I got them on Amazon. And there's a lot of different companies that sell them. So they're, you know, I think I got four for six dollars or maybe ten dollars and that's about all you need really i mean for our family we have a family of four i got two boxes of them because we probably have four to six jars in process every you know all the time right. the question is is this the daughter that helped you when you hurt your arm one of them yeah, i have two they both they both did some shows when i when i broke my arm yeah she's the one that's she's shorter like me. My other daughter is like, she's six foot, or she's probably over six foot by now. So she's way, way taller than me. And my, yeah, my youngest daughter has more sandy colored hair like mine. And, and my older daughter has dark hair. Nice. Let's see. Uh, Jan, Jan says, can you sub mashed carrots for the sweet potatoes? I would guess that would work. They might not be quite as sweet, but you know, since you have the dates in there, I think it would probably work just the same. Nice. Where do I watch Jill Dalton's show? Kathy wants to know. On YouTube. So it's the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show, like you see on my shirt. 
Whole Food Plant Based Cooking Show on YouTube. And I also have an Instagram. It's the Whole Food Plant Based Cooking Show on uh, Instagram. Very cool. Well, you guys have any more questions or anything you want to talk about, Jill? You want to bring your husband on so they can see that he's a real person? Yeah, yeah you'll see my husband. He'll be out of the shop because he's, he's, six he's five, way taller than me. Just like AJ's husband's way taller than her. I don't know what it is about us short ladies, big and tall guys. Hi, nice to meet you. This is Jeffrey. He is real. <laughs> he's the behind the scenes Always man. He does the all scenes. the editing and the you know, a lot of the production of the show. Yeah. How long have you guys been married? Uh, 24 years this year. Yeah, it'll be 24 years in October. Oh, wow. I got you beat by one year. I have a very tall husband too, but he would never come on camera. He's so shy. Yeah, this is probably his only third time in, in 200 shows or so. <laughs> Well, I am very honored because you know what people are asking of you, I, you might have said this on the last episode, people always want to know what a day's worth of eating looks like for every single person that comes on the show. Right. What is a day worth of eating for me? Or is this for Jeffrey or for Jill? How about both of you? Because are you cooking meals for him? I don't cook anybody breakfast. Breakfast, everybody's on their own. Lunch, we, we usually go for leftovers. And then dinner, it's either me or my daughters that cook. Um, so for me, for breakfast, I usually have some kind of oat, right? Either if it's like a piece of Ezekiel bread, one of these muffins, one of my flat breads with a little bit of peanut butter, a big pile of sprouts, probably at least a cup full of sprouts, and then a fruit of some type. That's usually my breakfast with a coffee. I have coffee every morning. And, uh, uh, I have, for breakfast, I do, we make a, a sprout granola. Oh, it's over there. Yeah, we're, we've been making sprouted buckwheat granola. That's one of our recipes that'll be coming. You guys are real sprouting uh, champions these days. Yeah, it's been so, it's just, it just kind of blew my mind, I think, how simple it was and that how much nutrition is in there. I think uh, we, it's exciting. The way you feel, when you first go plant-based, you you feel so much better. Like it's it's a leveling up for sure. And what we found with the sprouts, like eating sprouts with every meal, is that it, we felt that same kind of leveling up. Right. So we already felt good, but, the, but eating sprouts, like putting them in your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like every single day, it really, it's better than caffeine. It's so strange. Yeah. And it's so easy to do. A lot of them don't even have any flavor. Yeah. The quinoa and Col the buckwheats are so neutral. They're sort of like tofu. Like they don't have a, a strong taste. Right. So you can sweeten them and make, you know, we'll use them to make cheese sauce or you just blend them up in the, in the blender. Um, so they're really easy to use. You know, if we make this granola, we just dehydrate it so it doesn't get too hot. It doesn't destroy the sprouts. We use cinnamon and, and um, yeah, like so it's, yeah, it's, it's and sprouted buckwheat. Yeah, um, cinnamon, raisins, dates, raisins, yeah. Uh, almonds. Yeah. Super, super. You know, I did that like 20 years ago at culinary school, and I just kind of stopped. I, you're getting me really uh, curious about about doing this again. If it really, I don't want more energy though. I need the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need, to, I need something to come to, to make me less energetic. So Shane's saying, what's a good sprout to start with? For, so when somebody starts their sprouting, what, what, what do you suggest is the first sprout? Yeah, I, I think the sprouted grains like buckwheat or quinoa, because they're like two days and you have sprouts. Super easy. Super they don't easy. smell. Yeah. yeah, they don't smell. They're really neutral, but it's a grain. You know, it's not, you know, it's not like a, a plant seed like cabbage. Uh, I would say the next one in line would be clover because it, at the these? same time, it's really neat. Lentils. Sprouted lentils, super easy. Yeah, they go, usually what we'll do for dinner, if we have a sauce, uh, instead of rice, if you just put yeah. a cup of lentil sprouts in, in your dish and put your sauce on it. Yeah, we use They're amazing because they have a good texture and yeah, they, yeah. they pretty much go with anything. Can you, can you use the quinoa you buy at a regular grocery store or do you need to buy a specific one made for sprouting, says yeah. Stephanie. I buy the stuff at, um, I get it from Anthony's. It's, it's online too, but yeah, you can just use regular quinoa from the grocery store. I would, you know, suggest always organic if you can. Um, just because you're, you're sprouting it, it's a very live, live thing and you're, yeah, I don't know. That, that's just my belief if you're going to be eating a lot of it. Um, that you should go for the organic. I agree. What does your shirt say, Jeffrey? People said they like it, but I can't read it. This is an office, the show, The Office. 
it's a Dwight Troop and uh, Jim. Yeah. There's a joke between them. Bears, Bears beats. beats and Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> nice. My, my nice. daughter was for me as a kid. They're, yeah. they're huge office fans. So. The, the original uh, British version or the Steve Carell version? Yeah, the, the American version, Steve Carell. Yeah. Yeah. But we love the British version too. It's yeah. hilarious. But I think yeah. we we probably watched the entire, what is it, eight seasons, nine seasons? Probably three or four times. At least. We've been through, We've been through the whole, and, and they know all of the lines. We're actually going to do some uh, trivia project with them with a, like a hot sauce challenge uh, show um, using the, the office trivia for them while they eat their really hot food. <laughs> There's a question on, do, do the, does the flavor of different sprouts vary? Melissa wants to know. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Some are, um, like quinoa and buckwheat are very neutral. So you can, you can kind of use them for savory stuff or sweet stuff, uh, like making cheese sauces or mixing them into hummus. And, and then the lentils have a stronger, stronger taste. Uh, the cabbage sprouts, even stronger. And then like the broccoli sprouts are really, really strong. They kind of smell. So it's, it's the quinoa, just Anthony's. Yeah. The buckwheat's the same. Right. And, and do you use any kind of special lentils for sprouting or just the ones you have? Um, I got, I actually got sprouting, sprouting lentils um, just because our, full, our, ugh, our whole foods has stopped. Um, their whole bulk section isn't available anymore uh, during COVID. So um, their organic lentils aren't there anymore. And the shelves get, you know, lentils go really quick. So I, I, I just said, well, I'll just buy a, a big bag of the sprouting lentils. And the, the sprouting seeds, they've sort of been tested to sprout well. So if you're trying to sprout and you don't get sprouting seeds, you can end up with a jar full of seeds. That yeah, or half. Pop, so. Yeah, or half. Yeah. They just stay in the hole and, and don't sprout. Adita wants to know if sprouts are easy on the stomach and do you eat the buckwheat or just the sprout? It just, it pops. So it's like a little, looks like a little uh, baby plant, like a little oh, root. We don't have any. You just eat the whole thing. And they're actually fantastic for your digestion, like your whole whole process, everything. I mean, if your plant base is probably going well anyway, but the sprouts definitely, yeah, I, I <laughs> definitely would, enhance that. I would say in the beginning to start with, you know, you know, like a cup a day and just see how you feel. Cause I know he says it in the book, if you go too, you know, too much too fast that you might have an upset, upset stomach. Um, it's not a bad thing. I think it's just your, it's your gut fiber. flora yeah. is trying to adjust um, to this new food. So I would just start slow. You got me really excited. Just I just want to eat sprouts now. <laughs> Oh, it's so His, uh, Doug Evans' uh, uh, interview on the Ritual podcast it's is fantastic. really what inspired us. It's such a good conversation, and he's yeah. so passionate about you know, what, it, aside from the health benefits even, the idea that you can sprout organic, essentially organic produce without even sunlight. Right. It's just jars on your counter. So if you're trying to eat more organic produce, it's so much more cost effective than going and trying to buy organic kale or you know buy various uh, organic produce at the store. So it makes it really accessible. Yeah. I think I'm going to wait for your course because I like I like to I learn visually. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. what we were thinking. We'll show we'll kind of show our process because we get sometimes we have like six jars going at a time. Yeah, and some of them take out in the fridge. We just fill them up. And, yeah, and some of you know like what we said the quinoa and the buckwheat only take a couple days. You know, these cabbage sprouts take three, sometimes four, but some of the other ones take seven days. So, you know, it's kind of a oh, learning yeah, process yeah. for which ones you need to keep going more frequently and how much, you know, I've oh, found yeah. that I absolutely love these. So I eat more of them. So I have to keep a lot going. So that's a, this is more of a microgreen, but these are pea shoots. It's still just, she'll, you know, we'll sprout these in the tray and then she'll set them on the windowsill because so they can get sunlight and they turn green. Right. And you just take scissors and just trim them off and throw them in the But I definitely yeah. much prefer the jar. That yeah, takes, it takes easy. at least seven days to get them to that point. And they go so fast for seven days. I'm like, ah, we just ate that whole tray and it took me seven, great, seven <laughs> days to grow those. You, you don't have a cat by any chance, do you? Wouldn't the cat want to eat those? Oh, we, we don't, don't have a cat. Yeah. Okay. Our dog likes sprouts. I feed her these lentil sprouts when I'm eating them, just one at a time, and she'll sit there eating them as, as long as I'll give them to her. She's but fine. right, cats get up on the counter, though, right? 
Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they would bother those or not. That's interesting. I know, it just looked, looked a little bit like catnip, you know. So that sounds, yeah. So you can sprout seeds too, right? They say everything's better sprouted for you, beans and seeds and nuts. Because it's, well, the seed has just like, you know, just like a baby, it has the DNA uh, code to grow an enormous plant from this teeny, teeny, I mean, if you see these seeds, these are teeny. One of these teeny, teeny little pinhead sized seeds will grow a cabbage. So it has all of that information and all of that energy locked up in that little seed. So when you sprout it, it unlocks that, that stage and it goes into like super growth for the first few days. So it's the best, the most nutrients you can get out of seeds are in the first few days of germination. So you're getting way more nutrients than even a full grown cabbage. So if you, if you, think, if you think about that, you're growing a cabbage from a team of seed, you gotta, you gotta think of how much energy, you know, came from that little seed and then divide that by the size of that cabbage. So it's like, hands down, the sprouts win. Well, it looks like there's a second book in your future. <laughs> oh, maybe, I don't know. It yeah. might be. Uh, I think Doug's got it there. He's got it there. Yeah. yeah. Or it might just be a, like a, a PDF sprout cookbook. Well, Recipe. thank you. Yeah. yeah, figuring out ways to use the sprouts is, is fun. Right. Makes it yeah. Well, this has been great. You really inspired a lot of people to get sprouting. So I, I and when your class is ready, maybe we we'll do another show and get people to sign up for because I would definitely take a class like that. Because I like I like to learn by, you know, by looking rather than just reading. Well, we'll, we'll send you, you can be a tester. Yeah. <laughs> if I can do it, anyone can. I mean, you know, it's funny. I mean, I'm barely a chef. I mean, because I'm so lazy. That's the thing. But 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 you're right. This is this is something that that yes, would be amazing. Lazy man's vegetables. Lazy man's garden. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's great because you it, it can live anywhere. They can live in an apartment. They don't have to have the the room for a, for a big garden to do sprouting. Yeah, yeah, and for all the people that are you know they're locked inside right now with terrible air quality, you can be growing these on your countertop and still have fresh food. Well, you guys have sold me. You guys are terrific. I wish you every success with your book. I keep posting the links for people to pre-order it and. Uh, Oops. Yep. There it is. Oops. That was the t-shirt. Sorry about that. I'm also posting the link to the t-shirt because people really like that as well. So let's, uh, let's get this book. Uh, well, it already is number one, but let's keep it there. You know, it hasn't even come out yet. I know it's so oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Great. Well, you guys deserve it. You've helped so many people with your, with your show and, and thank you so much for the work you do. I really appreciate it. Thank you, AD. Thanks for getting the word out there and this wonderful interview. Absolutely. You can come back anytime. And thank you guys for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in two hours when we have a show with Julie Sarton. She is a pelvic floor physical therapist, and this is about sexual health. Does sex hurt? Well, we're going to have the answer. We don't want it to hurt. It's okay if it hurts good, but I mean, does it hurt hurt? So you'll definitely want to see that. Thanks again, Jill and Jeffrey. Bye. Thanks, AJ. Take care.